Okay, so I had a student ask me a question this week about a problem where a particle is starting at some point uh, at the top of the hill. Oh, it's not a great color. Hmm. <laughs> it's hard. Okay, there we go. Uh, starting at the top of this little hill, and it has some initial kinetic energy. Let's call that k naught is equal to... Uh, I think the problem just uses like 12 joules here. Oh, excuse me. Uh, the initial kinetic energy is 6 joules, and the initial potential energy is 12 joules. So that's going to be at point uh, B, I think. And the idea is they're asking about the uh, speed of the particle at this point and at this point in these sort of like little wells. And the, okay, so let's call maybe this point point one <clears throat> and this point point two. So the idea here is using a conservation of energy, we have the fact that. Uh, <sighs> I always got to switch my colors up. Okay, there we go. We have that k naught plus uh, u naught is equal to k one plus u one. So if we know that if we know what k naught and mu naught are, uh, and we can figure out some information like u one, then we can solve for k one, right? So you can basically just get u one right from the graph. You can uh, just look at its height, or I think it tells you exactly what that particular potential energy is. Uh, just read it off from the graph. I think in this particular case, it's going to be UA. And at that point, you should be able to solve for uh, K1, which is just going to be equal to 1 half MV1 squared. And you can solve for V1. And that's basically all you have to do. Right? And for the particle at point 2, it's the exact same problem except for uh, you, instead of being given in the text of the problem, is just presumably going to be zero. Uh, is that right? U C, U D. Yeah, I think it's understood that uh, it's zero at that point. Just double checking. Yeah, it, it's a little bit ambiguous as to whether this zero is for the x-axis, y-axis, or both, but I think it's indicating for both. So for, yeah, for part two, right, it's going to be k naught plus u naught is equal to k1 plus, or sorry, k2 plus u2. And if that's, you know, if it's at this, like, well down here, it appears to just be zero. So then k2, you can just solve for one half m v2 squared. That's all you got to do. Okay, so then for parts uh, C and D, uh, it's asking about the position of the turning point on the right side and on the left side. Well, okay, so what exactly is a turning point? We've got to first answer that. And I think the idea behind a turning point, uh, the idea behind a turning point is if it has so much, you know, whatever energy it does have, if it doesn't have enough to get all the way to the top here and there, the idea is that it's going to climb up, climb up, climb up, climb up, climb up. You know, it's going to get to a stopping point, all its kinetic energy is going to be exhausted, and then it starts falling back down. Like, one of the ways that you can really visualize and intuit these potential energy diagrams is, like, literally think about them as, like, a hill. Right? Literally think of them as a hill, and, like, the ball is sort of, like, rolling down and then rolling up. And if it has enough speed, it'll just keep going upwards. But if it doesn't have enough, uh, or sorry, if it has enough energy, right, if it has enough initial speed, initial height, and it can just keep going up until it reaches the top. But if it doesn't have enough energy, then it sort of falls back down. And the idea is, for this particular problem, it turns out that it's not going to have enough energy to make the top, so we got to figure out what that turning point is, right? So basically the idea is, okay, so we know k naught and u naught. So let's say that there's position 3 where it turns around, right? Some position 3. And uh, what we want to do now is basically just do uh, k naught plus u naught. Again, we know what these two values add up to, and that's going to be equal to k1 plus u1. And this condition, or sorry, I guess k3 plus u3. And the key condition here is that k3 is going to be zero, because the turning point is when all the kinetic energy is gone and it's all in potential, right? So then this is just equal to mgh, and the idea here is that we just need to solve for h. 
And once you do have H, uh, that tells you, um, Let's see height. Oh, I see. For this particular problem, it's a little bit strange because the y axis is not uh, height, but rather the height, the quote unquote height, is given by just uh, in terms of joules itself. Right? So this is just going to be a number between, I think, uh, 0 to 24 joules, and it's going to be a lot closer to 24 joules. Um, but the idea is okay. You, you basically know the height in terms of joules on this graph. Oh, I keep having to switch between colors. You know the height in joules, right? And you know that at the very top, this is 24, uh, given by the problem. And at the bottom, this is zero. So basically, you need to figure out what the ratio is, right? Uh, whatever your value here, I'm not going to tell you, but uh, you know, I'm going to give you a hint. It's going to be somewhere closer to 24. You basically just have to figure out the ratio, right? Like, let's say for hypothetically, let's say that the um the answer you get here was um let's say 16 joules that's not actually the real answer but uh then you would say okay so 16 joules divided by the total height 24 joules um is going to be equal to what out of one meter right this is basically going to tell you uh you're basically going to be using ratios here to figure out how far along on this uh, diagram it's going to be turning around on does that make sense? Like this question mark right here is basically going to tell you how far past the seven meter mark, uh, how far past the seven meter mark it's going to uh, reach the height. Yeah, hopefully that's, uh, hopefully that makes some sense. Like you could do this problem separately by uh, realizing that zero comma seven is a point and uh, eight comma 24 is another point, And then you could find excuse me, seven comma zero. And then you could find the equation of this line just using eighth grade math. And once you have the equation of the line, you're gonna figure out at what height, um, excuse me, at what X position it's gonna have a height equal to K naught plus U naught. So yeah, that's the idea behind this problem. Yeah, it's uh, ultimately after you get past the physics, this all just turns into uh, finding you know, it all turns into just finding the uh, point on a line, which is ultimately high school or middle school stuff, but it's just kind of wrapped in a slightly more complicated problem. Now for part D, it's basically the exact same idea, it's just on the left side now, right? So if it's going left, it's basically saying, okay, at what point, at what point is it gonna get to? But I think as it'll turn out, uh, right, so part, uh, for the last part, the issue is it's not quite as high as it used to be. So one of the things you kind of got to worry about is, okay, does it get to some point over here, stop and roll back down? Or does it actually have enough energy to go all the way to the top? And again, you got to just set K naught plus U naught uh, equal to zero plus the potential energy and figure out if this potential height is enough to carry it all the way to the top or not. And if it's not, then you gotta go ahead and do the setup again, where, okay, so if this, you know, at position three, it's got height uh, UA, and at position one, it's got height UC, you basically need to, uh, you basically need to interpolate to figure out at what X position it'll have the height K naught plus U naught, right? And uh, again, I don't wanna give all this problem solving away, but it's ultimately just um, playing around with the equation of a line in order to find that height or playing around with ratios to find that height. So just make sure that you're doing something reasonable. Yeah, okay. I think that's, hmm. Yeah, I'm wondering if I should say a little bit more. It's just, I don't wanna give everything away. Um, so for this particular issue, right, it's gonna be, have a distance of two and it's gonna have a vertical uh, travel of uh, what is that? Mu C minus mu A, which is, I think, mu C is 20 and mu A is 9, so that's like 11. Right? So, if I'm not mistaken, right, again, I'm going to say that, let's say that the uh, total height is 16 joules, right? It, that's not the actual answer, because I don't want to give it away. But, okay, so then 16 
uh, you would have to take 16 minus mu a, which is 16 minus 11, right? Because that's sort of like, <laughs> that's sort of like the total ratio. Excuse me, that's sort of like the distance you're actually traveling for, uh, That's sort of like the distance you're traveling, um, what do you call it, vertically. And then if you divide that by the total uh, total uh, vertical distance, which is mu c minus mu a, which I think we said earlier was 20 minus 11 or 9, and then you set that equal to the actual x distance traveled, divided by the total uh, x distance, which is 2. And then you would solve for that, right? And then once you have this x distance, that would tell you basically, uh, that would tell you basically how far you're going along here until you reach the magic point. So then you would just have to subtract that x from three. All right, that should be enough. <laughs>